Lynch. You can count on. President Donald Trump will make a campaign stop later today in Westmoreland County. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Peggy Finnegan. And I'm Gordon Lesh. The president will speak tonight at the Arnold Palmer Regional Airport in Latrobe. He's set to take the stage at 7 o'clock. You could still register for tickets on their website. If you want to go, though, you'll have to sign a waiver. It states that you understand the inherent risk of possible exposure to COVID-19. And by signing it, you agree that the Trump administration and the airport are not responsible if you become sick. Former Vice President Joe Biden was just in Pittsburgh on Monday. It was his first major campaign speech since he became his party's nominee. Biden today will visit Kenosha, Wisconsin with his wife. President Trump was there earlier this week. And we want to know what you think about the president's visit today. What's the number one issue you want to hear him talk about? Is it COVID-19? Is it crime? The economy. You can vote now on WPXI.com slash vote now. And we will have full Team 11 coverage of tonight's event starting at 5 o'clock on Channel 11 News. And we will send an alert to WPXI app users for any breaking developments. Both the president and Joe Biden will be back in our area next week. They'll travel to Shanksville to pay their respects at the Flight 93 Memorial, marking 19 years since the 9-11 attacks. It's not clear whether they will be there at the same time. And breaking news at noon, FBI agents are conducting searches at two local nursing homes. The FBI is at Brighton Rehabilitation and Wellness Center. You'll remember that is the Beaver County facility that had the worst COVID-19 outbreak in the state of Pennsylvania. Brighton Rehab had more than 400 coronavirus cases in residents and staff members, and 73 residents died there. And agents are also at a Mount Lebanon Rehabilitation and Wellness Wellness Center. Channel 11 has a reporter looking into why these agents are at these nursing homes. You can look for a full report coming up starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Now, severe weather team 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith joins us. Yeah, Jessica, raining now. How's the rest of the afternoon looking? is looking wet with widespread rain continuing into the early afternoon hours. So for the next few hours, expect it to be quite wet across the area. Seeing that widespread rain right now during your noon hour this midday, the heaviest downpours are farther toward the southwest Moreland County, also into Fayette County and also portions of Greene County. Let's zoom in there and notice we're not seeing any lightning, but again, very heavy downpours making for a very messy commute if you're headed out and about this afternoon afternoon, maybe about to go grab some lunch. Again, very wet roadways there, and we will continue to monitor any potential for uh, thunderstorms that could be strong to severe. More details on what you can expect for the rest of the day and rain chances. That's coming up in just a few minutes. There is growing concern among health experts that this coming holiday weekend could spark another spike in coronavirus cases. This is the federal government is reportedly advising states to be ready to receive potential vaccines as early as late October or November. NBC's Tom Costello has the latest from Washington. With Labor Day fast approaching and summer starting to wind down, this morning health officials are warning there cannot be a repeat of what we saw at the start of this season. Major crowds at beaches and pool parties likely contributing to a big spike in coronavirus cases just after Memorial Day. The U.S. is still averaging more than 40,000 new cases per day and more than 900 daily deaths in the past week. That's an unacceptably high baseline. We've got to get it down. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that number needs to drop from 40,000 closer to 10,000 or fewer as we approach the flu season. You don't need to lock yourself down, but don't be careless about things. And such as, you know, crowds in a bar or what have you. Make sure you wear your mask. And that mask we're all wearing could be critically important if we go to visit family this upcoming weekend. If you've been out and about, you need to assume that you have COVID. And if you visit grandma, keep your mask on. And just hours after Iowa's governor defended a decision to allow thousands of fans at an upcoming college football game. If you have underlying conditions and you're part of a vulnerable population, maybe I wouldn't go to the Iowa State football game next, next week. Iowa State now reversing that plan, saying its home opener will include an empty stadium. 
While the first death has now been recorded in connection to that August motorcycle rally that brought hundreds of thousands of bikers from across the country to South Dakota, believed to be the largest event since the pandemic led to most large-scale events being shut down. And this, the CDC now telling states to prepare to be ready to distribute millions of potential vaccine doses as early as late October or early November, just about the time of the November elections. The agency, in a letter obtained by CNBC, urging governors to expedite applications for distribution facilities and, if necessary, waive requirements that would keep them from being fully operational by November 1st. That was Tom Costello reporting. Now, Dr. Fauci still insists he thinks it is more likely that we will see a vaccine by the end of the year, probably not in October or November. Breaking in noon, county police just filed homicide charges in the case of a woman whose body was found in a refrigerator. This morning, county police charged Daryl Jones with criminal homicide. Police believe he killed Christy Jefferson. She went missing in April of this year, and her body was found about a week later in a refrigerator on Helen Street in McKees Rocks. Jones is in the county jail waiting to be arraigned. Some new details now on a disturbing accusation. A man charged earlier this year with spying on people in the restroom is now facing dozens more charges. Channel 11's Mike Holden explains how police say he pulled off the crime. The former West Penn Hospital employee told investigators he was, quote, curious about what he would capture on his hidden camera. Now, former patients are weighing in. They say they feel absolutely violated and he deserves every criminal charge against him. Channel 11 first told you back in July that investigators would likely file more charges against ex-West Penn Hospital staffer Guy Cayley. Today, it happened after police recovered more videos from his hidden camera. Cayley has now been hit with 83 new criminal charges for allegedly recording at least 34 patients and more than a dozen employees in their most private moments. Police initially charged Cayley back in July with invasion of privacy and illegal use of wire or oral communications. Police paperwork says he took a small video camera and taped it to the side of a chair across from a toilet in a unisex hospital employee-only bathroom. He was even captured on that same camera, placing it in the location. When police questioned him about it, he said he not only secretly recorded unsuspecting employees in the bathroom, but also unsuspected patients while in the radiology department. The various victims were captured in a state of partial nudity. Number one, what, what you're doing is despicable, but number two, it's um, you really have to understand the ramifications that it has on other people and how it makes other people feel to um, how it makes other pe people feel now that the acts that you've done, it just violates their, their trust. Allegheny Health Network officials have since released this statement in part, saying, quote, the allegations described in these criminal charges against a former West Penn Hospital employee are appalling, and West Penn condemns his actions in the strong possible terms. I'm now working to get additional updates from Allegheny Health Network officials about this ongoing investigation. Plus, former patients message to the suspect for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting in Bloomfield, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. Governor Tom Wolf has made legalizing recreational marijuana a priority, and today he'll urge the General Assembly to do the same. Wolf says the money could help the state recover from the recession caused by the pandemic. He wants the sales tax to go toward small business grant funding and restorative justice programs. Wolf says 50% of funding would be earmarked for those businesses impacted by COVID-19. The governor will make his pitch to lawmakers in Harrisburg this afternoon. We have a crew working on the impact this could have locally. And a lot of that story coming up on Channel 11 News starting at 5. New at noon, Facebook says it won't allow new political ads the week before the November presidential election. Our D.C. correspondent Jacqueline Fell takes a look at the new effort to fight election misinformation. Mark Zuckerberg, the chief executive at Facebook, says the election is two months away. And with the coronavirus pandemic and such a politically divided country, this election will not be business as usual. Facebook will ban new political ads from running in the week before the election on November 3rd. The company will also take down posts that claim voters will catch COVID-19 if they go to the polls to vote. And should a candidate try to declare victory too soon, Facebook will link to official vote counts. 
This move comes after the platform has come under fire for refusing to censor, fact check, or remove certain political content for years. Facebook has also been criticized for the role it played ahead of the 2016 election when Russian trolls and bots used ads on the website to try to influence the outcome. The Trump campaign immediately blasted the company for its new policies, saying the president will be banned from defending himself on the largest platform in the country just seven days before the most important election of our history. Reporting outside Washington, Jacqueline Fell, Channel 11 News. And speaking of the election, a big retailer is stepping up to help out on Election Day, offering to pay its employees to work the polls. Channel 11's Liz Kilmer reports. Polling places like this one here could get some extra help from retail workers on Election Day. It's all thanks to a company's new plan. As Election Day nears during an unprecedented time, mega retailer Old Navy is stepping up to help ensure polling places have enough hands November 3rd. Channel 11 told you earlier this year that the pandemic has resulted in a reduced number of available poll workers. But Old Navy is providing an incentive to its own staff, offering to pay its 50,000 employees to work the polls on Election Day in hopes that sites, quote, stay open and operate efficiently. Shoppers like Kathy Seifert think it's a great idea. I think it might be better to have the younger people come out, too, and support the voting polls because the people of my age sometimes don't want to do that at this point. You know, you're a little leery about going to vote. So that's what I think. And Old Navy says that this plan is extending beyond its employee base, how customers can get involved in a report I'm working on for five. Back to you. All right, thank you. A watchdog group says millions of canceled doctor's appointments for veterans were never rescheduled. What the VA says is going on. We're looking at steady rain right now, but I'm looking at the latest storm tracker. In about five minutes, I'll go hour by hour and show you when the rain will get out of here. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Happy first day of school to thousands of students. What's new and what's next? That meeting is set for 4 o'clock. We will keep a close eye on it. This could bring some much needed rain for us. Count on Channel 11 News every morning. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist, Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. 
It's the first day of school for students in two local districts, Western Green and Upper St. Clair. Depending on the district, students will be going to school or working from home. And some parents worry their child won't get the education they need through, re through remote learning. This week, the State House overwhelmingly approved a bill giving parents more power. It would let them decide to let their children repeat a year of schooling. Currently, schools and parents make a joint decision. The bill does not include school sports. With students starting back to school, there was some concern from parents that the free meals program would be gone for kids who are learning from home. But Channel 11's Aaron Martin learned the grab and go meals will continue at Pittsburgh schools. In the days leading up to the start of school, thousands of Pittsburgh Public Schools families came to the North Shore for school supplies and meals. It's back to school that looks a lot different for parents like Tawana Davis, with kids staying home for virtual learning for at least the next nine weeks. Way too much energy in the house for me because it's like bouncing off walls left and right. They just curious. It's like snacky all the time. <laughs> for thousands of Pittsburgh students, showing up to school not only is critical for education, it provides guaranteed meals. The district provides free and reduced breakfast and lunch during the school year, a practice that continues with grab-and-go meals. We still plan to give out food for, for, for our um, students, breakfast and lunch, but also multiple meals so they won't have to come back and forth every day. School leaders first started the grab-and-go program in March when schools first shut down due to the coronavirus pandemic. Superintendent Anthony Hamlet says that model will continue going forward and the district will make sure students get those meals whether they're learning in front of a computer or back in the classroom. It shows the support and love that we have for our, for our uh, students, our faculty and staff in our community as well. So we want to be highly visible, highly supportive, highly collaborative with the community. Aaron Martin, Channel 11 News. And if you need a meal, we put the full list including the times they're operating on our website at WPXI.com. As we've been telling you, Pittsburgh Public Schools had to delay the start of the school year because uh, they ran out of devices to give to students. And the country has been dealing with a laptop shortage. School districts across the country are placing big orders for laptops for remote hybrid learning. Many universities and companies are also relying on remote work. The unprecedented demand for laptops is straining supply chains. Many device makers say they're trying to increase production to meet the demand, but there's only so much they could do. Well, fans are now allowed in the stands at high school sporting events, but they must still follow the rules. Schools still have to abide by the state limit on outdoor gatherings, which is 250 people. Except for Allegheny County, that limit is just 100 people. The Whippeal says that having parents at the games helps ease safety concerns. If an injury occurs, the parents are there uh, to provide support and um, obviously take them somewhere if they need to go or give the guidance to the athletic trainers or doctors that may be attending to that injured athlete. But following the rules could still be impossible for some sports like volleyball and water polo. State indoor gatherings are limited to just 25 people. The relaxed restrictions come as a surprise. Just last month, Governor Wolf urged schools to cancel all youth sports until January. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. We've been looking at steady rain through much of the late morning hours and even into the early parts of your afternoon. The steady rain will continue as we go into the early afternoon. The good news is as we go into the evening, especially the nighttime hours after sunset, we are looking much drier just in time for, for the end of the work week on Friday. I'll show you in just a little bit. But right now we are tracking some heavy downpours, mainly toward the south and east, especially throughout portions of Westmoreland County now mostly to the east of Greensburg and also farther south as well into northern and central Fayette County and even just a little bit to the far eastern portion of Green County to the east of Waynesburg. So tracking some heavier downpours. The good news is I've been tracking the showers for a few hours now. Haven't seen any lightning, but if we do have any thunderstorms, we will definitely keep our eye on it. We do have a very low possibility for strong to severe uh, storms to 
today. So we'll continue to keep our eye on any activity as we go throughout the rest of the afternoon. So again, these showers could be very uh, heavy at times and could also include some gusty winds. Again, have to monitor any possibility for any storms that could cause some issues, but the rain causing issues enough making for a messy day, messy roadways. Make sure to be careful out there on your evening commute, even though it may be dry around five o'clock. A lot of folks getting on the roadways headed home. Uh, the roadways may still be wet, even though it may not be raining. Make sure to keep a safe distance between cars and drive carefully. Here's eight o'clock after sunset. Notice how dry we are. Storm tracker showing a drier scenario, and that's going to continue for the rest of the nighttime hours as well. As, uh, as that cold front continues to push off toward the south and east, we could still have a few post frontal showers, and I do mean a few early tomorrow morning and also get a bit of cloud cover. But the good thing is behind that cold front, we're going to continue to filter in drier and cooler air into the area. So around lunchtime, looking pretty good. Here's 12 noon tomorrow. We're going to continue to clear things out, allowing plenty of sunshine for the uh, second half of the day for your Friday. So really looking much better. Now we have had a lot of rain in the area uh, during this past week, and here is the latest drought monitor and notice Notice how much the drought has been alleviated. So last week we were in a moderate drought for much of the area. Now we are abnormally dry. That's the yellow color you see here and even some portions of our area completely out of the drought. So we have numerous widespread showers today. Then after that cold front making for a beautiful scenario as we go into your Labor Day weekend. We can always in view looking good. Mostly sunny skies for Saturday. Warming up just a bit going into your Sunday. What we'll have is a wind direction shift pushing in a little bit of uh, warm air into the area, but we have to deal with the wet weather today and for your actual Labor Day on Monday could have an isolated shower, but most will be partly cloudy and on the warm side at 85 degrees. All right, thanks, Jessica. $100,000 is on the way to help clear vegetation and sediment from local waterways. It will include dredging and restoring several sections of Dirty Camp Run and Turtle Creek. The project will remove roughly 11,000 cubic yards of sediment. The money is part of the state's H2O program. Worried about the safety of self-driving cars? There's a new tool that lets you know where they are before you hit the road. Headache, brain fog, I lose my train of thought. They've recovered from COVID-19, but are still not 100%. The surprising amount of people suffering from symptoms months after catching the virus. Channel 11 News investigates and digs deeper. 11 investigates a secret deal between the state and a car show that brought thousands of people together during the pandemic. And local lawmakers didn't know until we told them. It's despicable. They talk out both sides of their mouth. Well, now they're demanding answers, and so is our Amy Marsenkowitz. It's tonight's 11 Investigates exclusive. Outrageous, ridiculous, unfair, just some of the words they used. Watch Channel 11 News every day at 5 and 6 p.m.
Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Butler County. Two men who were target shooting faced charges for nearly shooting nearby golfers. It happened last month along Cloverleaf Drive in Salem Township, Westmoreland County. According to state police, two men who were target shooting at a farm, uh, their bullets nearly hit golfers who were on a nearby golf course. Those suspects, who are both from McKeesport, are charged with reckless endangerment. The Department of Veterans Affairs may have failed to follow up with more than 3 million canceled doctor's appointments during the pandemic. That's according to a new report that says the VA could have put those veterans at risk of not getting the care they need. These canceled appointments were for needs like primary care, mental health care, and specialty care. The report calls on the VA to put a proper tracking system in place to make sure no veteran is forgotten during the pandemic. There's a major concern, especially as it relates to mental health cancellations, because especially during this pandemic, mental health has been a tremendous challenge, especially for veterans. A spokesperson for the VA says the department follows up on all canceled appointments, even if it's not marked in the scheduling system. Veterans groups like the VFW are urging the VA to follow up on every cancellation, including ones marked as canceled by the veteran patient. The Red Cross is holding a blood drive at the Cranberry Township Municipal Center. The drive is from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Our news partners at Butler Radio say they're also going to be testing for COVID-19 antibodies to help with plasma donation. And still to come on Channel 11 News, seven ballots could change the outcome of a race from two months ago. Why election officials haven't counted them yet. We're still looking at widespread rain in our area right now, but up next in about five minutes, I'll let you know how the weekend is shaping up to be. Evan investigates a secret deal between the state and a car show that brought thousands of people together and local lawmakers didn't know until we told them. Outrageous, ridiculous, unfair, just some of the words they use. Watch Channel 11 News at 5 and 6 p.m.
You're streaming WPXI now. Your source for original local shows. Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, and more. The hottest Pittsburgh sports topics with even hotter opinions. Halftime adjustments. Wednesday nights at 7.30 on WPXI now. Make sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. New at noon, the Labor Department reports 881,000 people filed first-time claims last week. That is a sharp drop from the previous week. The decline is attributed to an improving jobs market and a change in how the Labor Department accounts for seasonal shifts in employment. The number of continuing claims for people filing for benefits for more than two weeks in a row also dropped sharply, down 1.24 million. While lower numbers show a job market headed in the right direction, these numbers are still well above the record high unemployment numbers seen during the 2008 financial crisis. Remote learning has a lot of challenges, and one of them is cyber attacks. I really wanted to do math, and I can't do it now because they hacked it. And I really wanted to do it because that's my favorite subject. <laughs> Since August 4th, one tech security firm tracked 56 new incidents at schools across the country. They predict 10 to 20 times more incidents this fall. They say so much time and money went into developing a remote learning plan, but nobody really thought too much about security. It's obviously, it's new, uh, this, type of, this type of attack of this magnitude. Um, dealing everything during this pandemic is new to, to uh, law enforcement. This afternoon, the FBI Cyber Crimes Unit is investigating several cases. A protest against the Port Authority. Transit workers say they are being unfairly discriminated against. They say they're being sent home for wearing Black Lives Matter masks. More than a dozen people gathered outside the Port Authority offices yesterday. The Port Authority responded saying they believe Black Lives Matter. The authority also says their uniform policy has not allowed for any political or social justice messages since the 1970s. Protesters say they believe it's time for that policy to change. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith joins us again. And yeah, Jessica, raining now, but the weekend looking much better. Oh yeah, we are, we are looking great for this weekend. Why? Well, we're looking dry. And coming up in about 15 minutes, I will let you know when it will feel the best going into the weekend. But we have to get rid of the rain today. Feeling quite muggy and looking quite gloomy outside. Here's a live look right now looking at our tower cam here in Pittsburgh. And looking this way across the area. We are looking wet and notice a good bit of that wet weather has moved toward the east. So kind of clearing out in a few cities, but we will continue on with a pretty high rain chance for much of the afternoon, even with the heavier downpours. The good news is we've been able to avoid uh, much of the thunderstorm activity, even though we do have some heavy downpours outside right now in some locations coming up again. I will let you uh, know about details, including the your Labor Day weekend and how good it's going to feel behind this cold front. UPMC is going to be providing updates on it, its experience with COVID-19 today. Hospital officials say they're going to be discussing what they've learned over the past months about the virus. They will also discuss UPMC's clinical trials and the impact those trials have had on treatment. COVID-19 studies and survivors are sounding the alarm about the potential long-term health effects of this virus. Up to 35% of patients are still experiencing symptoms after their are considered recovered. NBC Sarah Dolliff has that story. Stomach ulcers, um, acetaminophen. They call themselves long haulers, COVID-19 patients who've beaten the virus but still have debilitating symptoms. Joint pain, headache, brain fog, I lose my train of thought. It's gotten to the point where it's been difficult to care for myself. A recent CDC report finds a third of coronavirus patients who weren't sick enough to be hospitalized still aren't feeling back to normal weeks after their diagnosis. And two studies out of Germany last month indicate the virus may linger in the heart for months, even among those who experienced mild illness. There is no free pass with COVID-19. Northwestern Medicine Chief of Cardiology Dr. Clyde Yancey wrote an editorial accompanying the studies. 
The first found heart abnormalities in 78 of 100 patients months after recovery. The second looked at autopsies of 39 patients and discovered evidence of the virus in the heart tissue of 24. This is novel. These are things we've not ever seen before. We need to look in other groups groups that are not in Germany, for example, look at different age groups, different races. We need to understand, is this a ubiquitous problem or a selective problem? Oh, I guess it was. Warren Friedman sees both sides as a doctor at Cedar sinai and a recovered coronavirus patient who was still getting winded climbing stairs weeks after his recovery. It's not just about surviving. It's the fact that this is the kind of virus you don't want to get. The battle some thought they'd won, still raging on. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. For some context, only about 10% of influenza patients still experience symptoms two weeks after being diagnosed. Yeah, that's really scary. Well, one person can really make a difference as we fight the spread of COVID-19. That is the message that county health officials are trying to get out. They say they have linked 40 COVID cases to just one teenager. The cases include three family members, a co-worker of one of the family members, and other teens. The data was released in this chart. They say they traced that one case for two weeks starting August 14th. And what happens is you start out with young, healthy people who get the infection, and then unfortunately they spread it to vulnerable populations. Health officials say this one case just proves why we really need continued restrictions on youth sports and in-person schooling. A new COVID-19 study has revealed possible risks to pregnant women. It says pregnant women diagnosed with COVID-19 don't always show symptoms, but they are more likely to be admitted to the intensive care unit after a diagnosis. It also found pregnant women with COVID-19 are at increased risk of delivering preterm babies, but preterm birth rates were not high. The research added pregnant women are included in the list of people at moderate risk, so they should continue to follow the latest government guidance on coronavirus. The baseball world loses a legend. Pitcher Tom Seaver won 311 games during his 20 Hall of Fame year, uh, seasons. Known to millions as Tom Terrific, Seaver helped lead the 1969 Mets to the team's first World Series win. Slugging great Hank Aaron called Seaver the toughest pitcher he ever faced. Seaver retired from public life in 2019, suffering from dementia. According to his family, he passed away Monday. Tom Seaver was 75 years old. An officer and a hero, the daring rescue of three children in Ohio. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we've been bringing you a special version of Local Steals and Deals, where we shine a spotlight on amazing companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses really are the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. With Local Steals and Deals, we bring you exclusive offers from these brands on products that make your life safer, brighter, and more fun at a time when we all really need it. Join us in making a difference. Simply pick up your phone and text USA to 65000 to learn more. This year, back to school is certainly different. So much has changed, and Channel 11 Morning News is here to prepare you for your day. Bringing you what's new, new details as your children go back to class or learn from home. Breaking updates all morning long. 11 investigator Angie Moreski reports on concerns. Our medical expert answers your questions. Plus weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Channel 11 Morning News covers what's new, now, and next. Every morning as we go back to school.
severe weather coverage where you live. On Channel 11 News. More than a month after the June primary, an unopened envelope with seven provisional ballots was found at a Westmoreland County polling precinct, and they could actually change the outcome of a race. Those ballots were found among stored voting equipment at a site in Unity Township. Officials believe the ballots were accidentally placed under a box and under a scanner. Those votes will be counted next week, and as I said, they could change the outcome of a race. That's the race to fill three open seats on the county's Republican committee. Officials say they're going to use new procedures in the future to make sure this doesn't happen again. A mother from Ohio says she owes a police officer a huge debt of gratitude after he helped save her three children from a car crash. A crash happened Saturday on an interstate near Cleveland. Emma Jamison says she was trying to pass a slow-moving car when they collided. Her car rolled over, trapping her kids inside. The first officer on the scene crawled into the wreckage to free the kids. Everything from there was just so fast. I remember seeing the one officer carrying my daughter in the car seat, and then he went back from my son, and there was just blood all over his arms. Mm. Jameson says her daughter is still shaken up, but all the kids are doing okay. <laughs> It's been six years and millions of ice cubes later, and you know what? We are seeing the results, the important research paid for by the Ice Bucket Challenge. We've been pretty active today, uh, but coming up in about five minutes, I'll let you know what to expect for your Labor Day weekend. This year, back to school is certainly different. But Channel 11 Morning News is always here to prepare you for your day, bringing you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. Be prepared for back to school. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. news is happening near you, Channel 11 is there. Aliquippa, Coriopolis, Moon. We cover news everywhere you live. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, Butler. For news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. Be prepared for back to school. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. Many of us are driving less because of the pandemic. Our consumer advisor, Clark Coward, explains how knowing this could get you a break on your car insurance. Back in the spring, the amount of driving we did as a country went way down in the early stages of coronavirus. There's been some recovery, but we're still driving substantially fewer miles. As a result, the number of accidents, the number of injury accidents, way, way down. 
Early in coronavirus, a lot of insurers were giving us rebates on our premiums, but most of them have gone pretty silent lately, and the industry is reporting massive profits right now. So what should you do? If your insurer is being cheap with you, go shop your auto insurance. They're looking forward seeing that driving's going to stay down for a good while to come, so they may be more willing to offer you a deal on your auto insurance. Your existing insurer is just banking your money. So go out and see if there's a better deal for you, your car, and your wallet. I'm Clark Howard. There's a new warning today about an old phone scam. The State Administrative Office of Court says people are calling their victims claiming to be a relative who needs money for bail or other court costs. The state courts say they would never ask for payment over the phone. A new casino could be built near Penn State's main campus. A real estate mogul and partner in the Rivers Casino here in Pittsburgh won a $10 million bid on the project. The casino would include up to 750 slot machines and 40 table games. It could go in right near the Nittany Mall near State College. There's a new feature on the Google Maps app that lets drivers know about traffic lights at intersections. The new road icons are visible in the app at intersections throughout U.S. cities. Google says the change will help people stay better informed. Users will also notice the app's latest redesign also has a feature to help users more easily identify different terrains like beaches and forests. And it also shows sidewalks and pedestrian islands. The U.S. Department of Transportation has a new tool that will allow you to track self-driving cars. Yeah, they do. The goal is to improve safety and testing of automated driving systems. Displayed as an interactive map, this new tool allows you to view testing locations, see a list of vehicles being tested, and learn about the companies involved. Pennsylvania is one of nine states involved with this program. In Pittsburgh, there are self-driving Ubers already on the road. Walmart unveils its yearly top-rated by a kid's toy list. Some of the pics reflect life inside the pandemic. This year's list features 36 of the hottest toys for the 2020 holiday season selected by kids. The list reflects this year's focus on trends, including interactive and educational toys, screen-free indoor entertainment, and energy-burning outdoor activities. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. It's been quite foggy outside. The widespread activity pushing off toward the east. The good news is because of all of the rain and the cloud cover we've had over our area, instability is low, which means storm chances are also low. But we're going to continue to monitor any activity that we see throughout the rest of the afternoon, this evening and tonight, clearing out a lot of the wet weather, replacing it with drier and cooler conditions for the weekend. More on that in just a little bit, but starting to clear out in Allegheny County. Just a few spots of light shower. They're also starting to clear out in Butler County, Armstrong County, filled with light rain right now. The bulk of the uh, heavier downpours in far eastern Westmoreland County, also a few spots there in Fayette County and also a few spots in Greene County. So we are starting to see some clearing in the activity. We do expect that as we go throughout the rest of the day. So within the next few hours, that's really when we're going to see the bulk of our activity and dwindling down as we go toward the evening and nighttime hours and then tonight quite quiet. So behind this cold front, that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on drier conditions, also cooler conditions as we go into your Labor Day weekend. So pushing out the rain with that cold front, looking forward to a pretty nice scenario. So just still have to deal with high humidity uh, rain chances, at least for the next few hours with the rain chances. Also going to monitor any thunderstorms that develop. The good news is we really haven't seen any lightning just making for, uh, again, a messy scenario, soggy scenario for the past few hours. Then behind that cold front, we go from quite steamy and sticky all the way down to quite comfortable. So dew points will continue to drop as we go throughout your Friday. And as that drier air pushes in, we are looking at uh, pretty comfortable conditions, especially during the second half of the day. If you do have to get outside the afternoon hours, it will really be the best time for you. And then this weekend, 
also looking picture perfect. Here's what you can expect tomorrow. Tomorrow, if you want to get outside during the afternoon, uh, getting into the 70s, around 76 degrees by 5 o'clock, clearing out the cloud cover, plenty of sunshine for the late afternoon, early evening. Here's your Labor Day weekend forecast. Also looking pretty good this weekend. We can always in view dropping a degree or so more for your Saturday. Mostly sunny skies. Again, very low humidity, so really great time to get outside. The wind direction shifts on Sunday, bringing in a little bit of warmer air into the area. So 82 degrees, a little bit warmer there. If you like the cooler weather, Saturday will be your day. If you like kind of on the warm side, still looking good on Sunday with plenty of sunshine, 82. And then an isolated shower or two for Monday, partly cloudy and warmer at 85 degrees. <laughs> Remember that? The Ice Bucket Challenge. Six years ago, it took social media by storm, raising money for ALS research. And now, we've learned it's paying off. Yeah, the money raised is helping fund a study of an experimental medication and is being described as a breakthrough in the fight. Patients who took the medication retained physical function for longer compared to those who received a placebo. What this really means is that there's hope that research is making progress uh, we are developing new treatments. Researchers will continue to follow patients in the study to see the treatment's potential effect on survival. Typically, ALS is deadly within two to three years of the symptoms. Still making an impact to the connection a new police officer has with one killed in the line of duty. Now here's local steals and deals. Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals, and this is the newest Amazon Fire TV Cube, and oh my gosh, are you going to love it. Now, here's the thing. If you don't have one of these yet, you're going to want one, because it's like a little magic box, okay? It comes to your house, and you take out of the box, and you plug it in your TV, and then voila, your TV does whatever you tell it to do. Not what you struggle with the remote, not what you're trying to type in, not with where's my readers I can't see, oh, I hit the wrong button, that's not what I meant. No, you speak, it does. And it reminds me of when I was a kid. I always joke that it reminds me of when I was a kid because my parents would say, because I said so, right? This will do whatever you want it to do, whatever, it, because you said so. So now you can access, you can just go straight to whatever show you want to watch. You can say, Alexa, play Sopranos on HBO, and it'll just play it for you. Or, you know what, just say, Alexa, play Sopranos. It'll find, it'll find where it is for you. You don't have to type things in. You don't have to misspell. You don't have to not see what you're doing. You speak, it does. Oh, you know what else is great? You actually get a one-year free subscription to Food Network Kitchen so you can watch some of the best chefs in the world teaching you how to cook, demonstrating everything you want. How fabulous is that? I have to tell you, I can't see the remote because I can't see anymore. I know my dad struggles with the same thing. What a great gift to get him something that I can plug into his TV and I can say, Dad, tell it what to do and he's going to say Alexa play Sopranos and he's never going to have to struggle with it again. This is the newest concept from Amazon in the Fire TV Cube and I think it is a lifesaver. Now I do want to tell you that great ideas are even better when you save money on them so this one is 25% off right now at localsteals.com. Why not upgrade every TV in your house instantly for a lot less? Localsteals.com and the newest Amazon Fire TV Cube. News is happening in your neighborhood. Channel 11 News is there. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, and Butler. We cover news everywhere you live, not just downtown. We're in Aliquippa, Coriopolis, and Moon. Bringing you stories that impact your town. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. More local news from more neighborhoods. That's a fact. We're in Bethel Park, South Park, and Mount Lebanon. When you want news from where you live. Watch Channel 11 News at 5.
Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. The newest police officer in Fraser Township has a connection to an officer who was killed in the line of duty. Steve Edwards was the recipient of an Officer Brian Shaw scholarship, which allowed him to go to the police training academy. Shaw worked for the Fraser Police Department for two years before joining the new Kensington Police. He was killed in the line of duty back in 2017. By tomorrow, movie theater chain AMC will have about 70% of its theaters open. More than 100 will open today and more than 300 will open tomorrow. Here's a list of local theaters that are reopening. They include Mount Lebanon and South Pike in Sarver. That is all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5 o'clock. And you can get breaking news updates anytime at our streaming apps. Just search WPXI on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Morning News brings you what's happening now. Just downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane. Jennifer Tomazic has been sifting through all the video. It really wreaked havoc. What's new? New focus on a missing persons case. Family certainly has gone a long time, several months without answers. And what's next? Today, the Pittsburgh Public School Board has two big decisions to make. That meeting is set for 4 o'clock. We will keep a close eye on it. This could bring some much-needed rain for us. Count on Channel 11 News for live coverage every morning.